Hello, welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul and it's nice to see you here again. If you're new to the channel, a very, very warm welcome and I hope you enjoy the videos. Today I'm showing you two different items, but both from Lancashire in the north of England. The two items are going to be a Chorley cake from Chorley, the town of Chorley, and an Eccles cake from the town of Eccles. Slight differences but a lot of rivalry between the two towns. So let's do it. Now I'm going to start off with the ingredients for the Chorley cake first. We're going to make the pastry first and for, uh, the ingredients will be underneath the video by the way with all the measurements. Don't worry about trying to remember them at this stage. I'm just going to run through them. Here I've got some plain flour, some salted or unsalted butter, a little sugar, some baking powder and a drop of milk. And that's for the pastry. And for the filling of the Chorley cake, I have, I'm using sultanas. Now, traditionally, they should be currants, I think, but I haven't got currants. Trying to buy currants where I live in Spain is worse than winning the lottery. It's a, a virtually impossibility. So I'm using local sultanas. I have some brown sugar and I have some butter that I have melted, if you can see that. And that's for the filling. Okay. Now the first thing we're going to do is to make the filling for the Chorley cakes. So we've got the butter and the sugar and the fruit. Now as I explained when I mentioned the ingredients, <clears throat> I'm using sultanas. I can't get currants here. Currants is the usual uh, traditional thing to make this with. I can't get it. In goes the sugar. And finally, the melted butter. Now, don't forget all the ingredients are listed underneath the video with all the amounts and measurements. Now we need to mix this thoroughly. We do this first before we start the pastry because this has to set. We can't be putting this in while the butter in it is liquid like that. Okay, we have to mix this thoroughly and let that set up. As it's setting, just keep having a glance at it and if there's anything settled out in the bottom, just make sure everything is coated, all the fruit is coated with the sugar and the butter. Can you see that there? I think you can see it okay. So the first thing we're going to do is to add the flour to the bowl and the baking powder. And I'm going to give those a little mix. You can sieve it together if you want, but it's not really necessary. Flour comes very well sieved these days. And it's just a case of mixing the baking powder into the plain flour. And then we're going to add the butter. Now, as I said in the uh, earlier, the butter can be salted or unsalted. It doesn't make any difference. You can do this with your mixer. You can do this with your uh, food processor. Uh, I'm today going to do it with my hand. Uh, sometimes my arthritis is too bad, I can't. But I get a lot of people saying, I don't have a mixer. Can I do it by hand? If you're not used to making pastry, it's a very simple operation. So all we're going to do is we're going to rub this butter, which is at room temperature. Now you see lots and lots of recipes and videos saying the butter must be chilled. Put it in the freezer, grate it, do this, that, the other. That's so in, not necessary. I've been making pastry 
for 60 odd years in the bakery and we never ever chill the butter for only one thing do we ever do that and that's when we're making puff pastry that's essential we do that now rub the paste the fat and the flour between your finger and thumb like this when you get it mixing into a nice a bit finer you can actually lift your hands away from the bowl and this will aerate the mixture as we're doing it but we're looking for a nice even crumb uh, the usual term is like breadcrumbs. Sometimes it doesn't look exactly like breadcrumbs, but in actual fact, because this has got quite a lot of butter in the recipe, it will actually look like breadcrumbs when we get it to that stage. This should take you about four or five minutes to get it to the proper consistency. So there we are, we've got it to the proper consistency now. Can you see that? There we are, it's nice, just like breadcrumbs if you can see it. And what we're going to do now is we're going to add the milk. And we do the same thing with our fingers, just keep lifting it up until we get the milk incorporated. We don't want to knead this like a bread dough. We just want to keep mixing until it's incorporated and the whole thing starts coming together. Oops, I've lost it, I'm sorry. It starts coming together. You can see that now it's starting to clump and come make a nice pastry. So what we do now is just push it together. Get it off my fingers. Just push it together and get a nice ball of pastry. Once you've got it like this, then you need to wrap it in cling film. I'll show you. Wrap it in cling film. Once you've got a nice ball of pastry, like this, it's coming together very nicely. There's just a little bit in the bottom of the bowl now, so we'll pick that up. And then we're going to put this into a ball, flatten it slightly. Wrap it in cling film and pop it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. This is nothing to do with cooling it. What it's doing, it's relaxing the gluten in the dough that we've started developing, which we don't really want in a pastry. We need to develop the gluten if we're making bread, by all means. That's why we do a lot of kneading and knocking about. But with this, we've pushed it together. We've created a little bit of gluten. But if we put it to rest now, that will relax and it will be nice short pastry. Now the pastry has been resting for about 30 minutes. I did explain it was nothing to do with cooling it was just to let the gluten relax. So we need some flour on here, rolling pin, flour the pin, And we're going to roll out the pastry and remember what I always say in every one of my videos is let the rolling pin do the work. Don't try and rush this part of the this part of the process. Let the rolling pin do the work. And keep your pastry on the move so it doesn't stick on your board. And you need it to be about probably eighth of an inch thick something like that now I'm going to use this size cutter here I think it's four inches I'm not sure four inches but if you haven't got an exact cutter like that use anything you've got or cut round a small saucer or things 
but there we go and remove your spare pastry now when we're using short crust of course you can gather that together and re-roll it not too many times but you can re-roll it now we're going to fill these with just a small amount of the of the filling probably a tablespoonful something like that and please don't write in complaining that I'm using my fingers it's what bakers do in the bakery all the time anything that's uncooked it's quite all right to use your fingers with it's when you're handling cooked food that's going to be put on the plate and eaten immediately you need to wear gloves okay now so we've done that and we're going to gather the pastry to the middle and that as well so just gather them to the middle and make them into a little round just gather them to the middle I put a little too much filling in that one sorry about that gather that to the middle and then push the ends up to meet it all and just make it a little round once all those are done what we're going to do then is I'll show you we're not going to roll or anything like that we're going to just put our hands on the surface like that Got a little too much filling in that one again sorry about that of course when you're making these every day in the bakery you get used to ex doing it with your eyes closed almost but of course when I haven't made them for a while as I don't make sweet stuff for myself anyway There we go. Now if you want you can just give them a little roll on top just to flatten them off a little bit. What you should be seeing is you should just be seeing the fruit through the pastry. I'm sure you can see that. Like that. That's what we're looking for. Now some people in some bakeries and some home bakers they paint these with water and print sugar on or egg white and print I don't do anything like that I think these should just be cooked as they are because they're best eaten when they're cooked with a little butter or a bit, a bit of cheese actually okay so I'm going to put these on a baking tray put them in the oven and they're going to be baked at about 180 degrees centigrade that's in a non-fan oven uh, 160 in a fan oven and they're going to take about 15 minutes probably not quite that I'll see you shortly well here we are now out of the oven you can see they're just starting to turn a little brown and that's just how I like them I'm going to leave them for a few minutes now to cool because they're very soft at the moment straight out of the oven and then I'll transfer them to the cooling rack so there we are the chorley cakes are nice and cool now and as I explained these are much better eaten with a little bit of butter just take a little bit of butter or and whichever you wish you can have one or the other or both a lovely bit of crumbly cheese usually a Lancashire cheese which is very very nice indeed so here we go just give them a little test 
just a little butter on top and I'll give that a taste. Mmm, it is absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. Now next we're going to make the Eccles cakes. They're very similar to this. The only difference is the filling is slightly different, but we will be using puff pastry instead of the short crust pastry. So now we're going to come to the Eccles cakes. Very, very similar. You can use the same filling or you can add some uh, different filling. Sometimes people add mixed fruit for this with a little nutmeg or things like that. I'm going to use just the same filling. I'm using sultanas, butter and a little sugar. There we are. That's all I'm using today. Now you'll notice here that I've got the puff pastry. I'm using purchased puff pastry today because for this little bit it's not worth making it. I'm using purchased puff pastry and I've cut it into squares of about five inches square. I'm going to get into trouble now for using inches. I can't get myself out of it. Sorry, I've used it for oh, so many years. Five inches square and uh, people always ask me when I'm telling people about this or even when we had people working in the shop, they used to say to me, why do we cut the puff pastry in squares and we use a cutter for the trolley cakes? Well, there's a simple explanation and there's a very important uh, uh, reason I'll tell you. First of all, when you're making chorley cakes, we're using short crust pastry, which means you can roll it out, you can cut your shapes out, gather the little bits that are left, screw them up in a ball, roll them out and recut some more out. With puff pastry, you can't do that. Puff pastry is a lot of layers of pastry, butter, pastry, butter, pastry, butter. And when you cut that out, you cannot roll these little bits that are trimmed off the edges up again because they're no longer laid out in layers. They're all scrunkled up. So you can't re-roll that and reuse it. That's why you cut it to squares and you just cut it to an absolute minimum when you roll it out. So you don't have much waste. Out of all this, I've only got that little bit of waste. I don't know if you can see that here or not. That little bit of waste, that's it. In all that. So off we go. I'm going to use an ice cream scoop for this. And I just use it so that it's a reasonably good measure for each of the Eccles cakes. That's all. A reasonably good measure. Not always, because sometimes they're sticking together with the butter, but never mind. So there we can see, we're going to put in the middle of each square. It's about a tablespoonful that I'm putting on. You don't have to have an ice cream scoop. In the bakery, we always use something with, of a measure type thing, because when you're selling things in the shop window, it has to all be the same. And it's got to be the same as the one next to it. And it's got to be the same every day. Otherwise, you get people coming and say, can I have that one at the back, please? It looks a bit bigger. OK, so we're going to take these now and we're going to fold the two corners in and the two corners in there. Then gather these little bits and just fold them up like that. To there, to there, to there and to there and then those corners into the middle like that. Show you again. One, two, three, four. Now if you want, you can damp the edges of these a little bit if you want. It's not really necessary because that fold is going to be underneath. So there we go. We'll fold that and that, that and that. And then these four corners go into the middle again. I'll just finish them off quickly. And these are for the Eccles cakes, remember. Now with the puff pastry, unlike the Chorley cakes, we do actually coat these with water. You can use egg white if you want. Some posh bakeries do. Egg white will, uh, uh, or water will do. It's only there to stick the sugar on. Okay, so what we're going to do is turn them all over now. Give them a little shape. 
and instead of using the rolling pin in in the bakery <laughs> I'll show you what we do we take them like this and we just take them one at a time and squash them with our hand like that we don't do anything else just squash them with the flat of our hand there we are and then we take a little sharp knife and we do two little cuts in the top of each don't ask me why some bakeries in Lancashire do three cuts some do two I only do two now that's going to go on a baking sheet I'll just get the baking sheet and be back in a second right so these are going to go on the sheet like so I'm going to just brush some water on top of each one not a lot and then we're going to take some sugar and we're going to dip each one into the sugar the water is only there just to stick the sugar on that's all now these are a much sweeter cake than the chorley cake because that's got no sugar on top this has got sugar on top and inside so it's quite a sweet one now there we are they're going to go in the oven now for 20 minutes at 175 uh, sorry I beg your pardon 20 minutes at 190 I'm getting mixed up 20 minutes at 190 check them at 18 minutes uh, and see how they're doing and I'll see you shortly here we are then Eccles cakes straight out of the oven very hot beautiful crispy on top juicy inside lovely flaky pastry so here we are with the Eccles cakes now and the Chorley cakes and Eccles cakes as you all know just eaten with a cup of tea but the Chorley cake it's less sweet than the Eccles cake and traditionally it's eaten with a little butter and or a piece of nice crumbly Lancashire cheese I'm just going to try this mmm absolutely delicious it's so short is the pastry it's almost like shortbread and it's got the nice sweet um, I've got sultanas inside normally they would be currants and I used a mixture of sultanas I used uh, ordinary sultanas and golden sultanas because I was short of the weight that's all but uh, and I mix them with sugar and uh, a little butter and there they are absolutely delicious now if you've enjoyed this video go underneath give it a thumbs up for me please it does help a lot if you have any comments leave them underneath as well and we'll try and answer as many as possible and also if you haven't subscribed yet press subscribe and when you do you'll see a little bell at the side if you click on that you will be informed every time I put up a new video so this is Mr Paul saying bye for now and I'll see you next time